Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at a brand new trailer that has only just been released for probably the most exciting upcoming entrant into the broader extraction survival FPS genre called Grey Zone Warfare. So why should you care about this game? For a start, the visuals alone give a lot of promise, breaking free of the drab Eastern European settings that have somewhat become the staple and instead give me serious Far Cry 3 vibes, which was a great game by the way. Obviously graphics are not everything, but it's an impressive starting point and Greyzone utilises the latest version of Unreal UE5 which makes everything look really quite amazing. Beyond how it looks, we also see some new features that weren't present in the first trailer including vaulting, which is at the top of every Tarkov player's mind right now because it's just about to be added to EFT itself in the December patch. So it's great to see that this is already included in the game and it won't have to be retrofitted later. We also get to see our first LPVO, which I have to say looks absolutely fantastic. Extremely crisp visuals within the optic, some tasteful chromatic aberration and blur around the edge, but this is a nice aesthetic choice without being detrimental to usability. If the rest of the scopes in the game are similar to this, then I think we're looking at a nice user experience, which when combined with the recall system that we've seen so far could play out really well. Before we pick up on a few more details in the new trailer though, let me catch you up if you're seeing this game for the very first time. So far we know that Grey Zone is set in a fictional Southeast Asian country, the Democratic Republic of La Mang, which involves a 42 km square map, which in their own words is a persistent world that keeps on living even when you're not playing. This rings much more of DayZ than Tarkov, but as we can see that helicopters feature fairly prominently in both trailers and again in their words you can utilise explorable landing zones and helicopters to move through this persistent world. Landing zones is a capitalised term so presumably is important and suggests some kind of hybrid between the two, with potential infill and maybe even exfill with vehicles being possible. But rather than being like Tarkov raids, they have stated elsewhere in the FAQ that there are no time limits for any session as they didn't want players to feel forced with time limited sessions so you can explore the open world jungle with your teammates and take your time. The most interesting things to me at this point is how these systems broadly are expected to work. I, do we have a home base or a hideout? Does every session start with a helo infill? Do we have to leave with our loot explicitly like in Tarkov? Or can you just simply log out in the middle of nowhere like in DayZ? It seems likely we will only find out more about this later on and Madfinger the developer intends to start early access in Q1 2024. Subject to change but they have said it will be PC only to begin with ultimately becoming a premium game like Tarkov i.e. not free to play and will have no microtransactions. This is certainly a relief given that Madfinger historically has been more of a mobile focused studio. So back to the trailer, a couple of interesting things to note. In the first one, there was some criticism about the way that some of the sites look, in particular these closed sites where you can kind of see inside prominently on the screen when the weapon is being aimed down the site. So it's really nice to see that this has been adjusted a lot for the second trailer based on community feedback. Just the simple fact that they actually went and made changes quickly in response, I think says a lot about the devs themselves, which is really a good sign. Secondly, something that was present in trailer 1 but is more obvious now in this one is the choice to not increase the field of view when aiming. Whether this will be an option or not to toggle remains to be seen but it's become more of a topic in Tarkov ever since the devs removed and then re-added the ability to free look while scoped which then introduced the possibility to ADS without any FOV change if you fiddle around with it a bit. However, the one piece that looks a little interesting let's say is the aim punch. We get one small shot of the player getting hit and although unlike Tarkov there is no blur associated with it, the magnitude of the aim punch itself is pretty extreme. We do retain vision of the reticle on the red dot at least, so in theory you could compensate for it and remain on target, but with the size of the punch this looks a little hard to do. It is difficult to draw full conclusions from seeing a single shot one time, but this might be a little overtuned, just something to think about. So I don't want to get too hyped up about this game yet because there is a million different directions that it could go in and we really don't know enough to know if it's going to be a serious contender to the long lasting bastions of the genre but I'm always happy to see more development and more attempts to make something cool, new and interesting and we should all want them to succeed. But what I will say at this point is that at least Greyzone looks like a great starting point both from a technological perspective with the engine and the setting as well as the work done so far on the various systems. So keep your eyes out for this one and we'll be surely giving it a fair tryout when the early access does come around. So as usual a big shout out to my patrons and as always have fun in your raids.